So I'm going to talk about our um, brand new shiny tool. And on the left <laughs> is Go 16, and on the right is Go 1. That's amazing, isn't it? It's incredibly big. Well, actually, oh, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. <laughs> So my little story about this, I'm, I'm supposed to be a geeky meteorologist, right? Just get so excited about this stuff. Well, I didn't really think Ghost 16 was that big of a deal. It's like, well, it's cool pictures, but I wasn't geeking out like everybody. So I felt really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but now my, my story has changed. I, I've been to the training. I've seen some stuff. I'm, I am now excited about it. But if you aren't excited about it, maybe I'll get you excited about it. So just a little bit of history um, on the image over here. The first GO satellites were back in 1975. And um, it's funny, they, as you learn about these things, but it, you know, it started with GOES A. When they're planning it, it's a letter. And then after it gets up in space, they give it a number. So GOES R became GOES 16. And GOES S, which will be going up next year, will be GOES 17. Um, it's, we do a lot of our work, the NOAA doesn't work with NASA, the first one's 1975, um, after reaching orbit, it goes from a letter to a number. Um, so currently, we do have a, a goes east and a goes west, and that's goes 13 and 15, which were NNP. <laughs> um, and the current goal 16 actually isn't operational yet, and that will be official around November. So whenever you see us posting stuff, you get this silly phrase on this might be upside down. You know, I know it might be cloud, maybe not. I don't know. Um, so, um, just other what's next. Um, the big kind of talk in the weather service world is they're eventually going to have to reposition Go 16 to go east or west to replace Go East or Go West, and just follow the money. It's more than likely it's going to go east. But that's okay. You know, maybe that's okay. I mean, collection right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we should do that. So. Is this winter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, the really the good thing is when they do shift it to the, well, if they shift it to the, <laughs> it, the parallax will kind of get messed up for us, but we're still going to be able to use the data. It's still, we'll still be able to see things. People like Hawaii and further west, it's going to be you know, almost unusable for them. But it will still be good for us. And the other good thing, it's not that far behind. The next one's going up already in March of 2018. And that will be goes Z, Z, A. No, that will be <laughs> goes S. And that will become goes 17. So that's pretty cool. Um, stay tuned. But that's and those circles are the... It goes east. It's yeah, east. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's so you can kind of see it goes east right now. If if once we shift to this, I'm sorry, Brooke. Thanks for saying that. Goes uh, 16 is going to shift over here, and we'll still it will still be showing hill. Yeah. So. We just won't see much of what's coming our way. Yeah. So what's so great about it? Um, updates five times faster. This is actually very significant. Um, we The old images came in every 15 minutes, as you guys know. Um, now they're coming in on air, or they come in every five minutes. And if we have a rapid scan over us, they can come in on every minute. You can see some really neat things. Um, it's the higher resolution. Um, the old satellite was about one kilometer, and it's gone to uh, half a kilometer. So what does that mean, though? It actually means, for example, objectively thinking about it, we used to be able to see fires when they got to be about 70 acres big. Now we can see a fire when it's 15 acres. And I was just on a call, a Sioux call, a few minutes ago um, with some folks that have been working with it longer than us. And they've been seeing fires, like house fires, things that are wow. like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I know, I know. It's like, this is why I'm all of a sudden a fan. <laughs> I wasn't before. I'm like, okay, well, now you're talking. Now we can actually do something with this, you know? <laughs> so what does that mean? We'll be able to see new small fires much more quickly and maybe help out the fire community with that, especially with how the weather is going to be interacting with these fires. So we can tell people, look out, there's a wind shift coming. We can see that wind shift now quicker than we did before. 
or maybe there's a couple fires and we can see one fire changing due to that weather whatever's happening that phenomenon and then predict like oh crap when that gets to that fire the same thing's going to happen we better hurry up and call those people and let them know what's going on would a fire situation be something where they would opt to do that close-up rapid scan like we yes we we can request that here in this office we can make a request anybody in any weather service office can request that yeah and we will probably do that the other cool thing that people aren't really talking about is the lightning detection with it. It's going to be amazing. And what it does, the biggest difference is that it, it actually detects in cloud lightning, where right now we mainly see the cloud to ground. And um, just kind of going big picture, I, one of the, the cool things about GO16 is I really think there's things that we're going to see that we, we didn't know were happening before. I really think that's going to happen. I've never thought about it that way but when I see people that are really smart people in the weather service share um, images they'll describe things as the weird looking thing that happened on that cloud <laughs> and it's like no they're seeing things that they didn't really know were going on so there's really smart people are gonna look at this and figure out some cool things I think um, but anyway some of the research is already showing that um, in cloud um, lightning strokes on average, are about 10 minutes before cloud to ground, ground. So, if we can start to see those in clouds moving in on the Strawberry, you know, festival, people will be seeing that, of course, maybe visually, but we can probably give a heads up of cloud to ground type stuff ahead of time. That's the big picture coming out of that. Um, they are already seeing really cool, like um, tracking the lightning density in thunderstorms and helping them predict combined with radar data to, to know when something's going to be severe quicker too. So we'll be need things like that too. Um, before I got excited about um, the new, um, <laughs> this is what I was most excited about. And I still am excited about this the most. I really think the biggest benefit that's going to come from GO16 is the observational part of it. There's so much information that we as humans just can't process quickly enough but a supercomputer can. And it's going to see things, and they're going to build algorithms. They're already building algorithms. They're going to make them better. They're going to make things like the probability of hail, um, the probability of a tornado. It's just going to make those algorithms better, and it's going to make us all better to have a faster lead time on things. Um, it's also going to improve the models because it's a much better observing system of observing the moisture and where everything is and garbage in, garbage out. The better data we can get into the models, this is going to do that. This is really going to help. So just some, you know, there's a lot of examples out there. So I try to pick some cool ones. And what everybody first geeks out of is this kind of the resolution. You know, it's so clear and right. so quickly. But, but that's... That's where, again, I was like, well, who cares? It's a cool picture. You tell me, <laughs> how, is, how is this making me a better forecaster? Well, where it is, is start looking at, for example, zoom in, uh, concentrate on this area right here, and watch these clouds. See, see this boundary coming down? See it moving south here? Look at that. Now, boom, it hits the fire, and look how it took off. So you're getting that update so much quicker and so much more rapid. If you're a forecaster and you saw this and you're seeing this fire, which you may not have seen before, and you're seeing the boundary, hopefully our job is going to be working closely with the fire people and say, holy cow, look out, there's something coming. Maybe you didn't see this boundary, but you saw the fire react to that. Then you'd be saying, holy cow, we better tell all these people down here when this boundary comes through, the fire behavior has been... You know, through the roof. Here's a, a loop of basically um, the other thing I haven't really talked about is uh, these things called RGBs. Basically, these pictures have all kinds of information, and the way you tweak the color bars to look at can get different things to jump out at you. And they're still experimenting with that. This one is a way to kind of tell us the intensity of the fires. The actually, the brighter the color, the bigger the fire is. So this will help us too to work with the fire weather community. Um, this is a recent one. This is when we had some rapid scan just recently over Colorado. So this is one minute imagery. And this is the one of those ones where 
it was like the Sierra super scientist guy. And his description was check out the supercell by Denver and look what the weird things the animal does. So he did. He, <laughs> again, it's like a doctor getting doing heart surgery. Like, what's this? You know, they're like, we're seeing things for the first time that we never knew existed. But this, the supercell he's talking about here. It, it's just it's boiling and spinning and showing some like vorticity type things. Also watch the look at the can watch this um, anvil from this thunderstorm interact with this one. Watch right in this area here. See how it's blowing back that I mean you see some amazing things again. But show me how this makes me a better forecaster. If you combine this. I know, I know, I know. If we combine this information with our radar data and our supercomputers, this is going to be some cool stuff down the road. Maybe not right away. It's cool pictures right now, but it will be application will be soon to come. But these are the things that you guys can use on camera. I mean, this yeah. is the eye candy that people love. Right. You know, they're just like, how cool are they? Are they? They're here. Yeah, they're right there. Okay. Look at this one, you guys. This was. This is some. Um, of a fire wow. over Florida. Yeah, cool. Isn't that going to be fun this summer? Yeah, when we see stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Things are burning down. But yeah. <laughs> well, the cool thing about this is the so we can see this, but we combine this with one of our newest high resolution resolution models called the HER. They've got a special smoke HER, and we get updates. Um, this thing will up will give a forecast every 15 minutes called the HER smoke. So, you know, we can combine these pretty pictures to make it interesting and actually verify it's happening. But we have an operational model that's going to help us forecast where the smoke's going to be. That, that, that one you can't help but go, oh, wow, that's cool. And let's check out this. this um, so, Bill, did you just say that um, information from the satellites is going to be in, used yes. in the model? Is that what you're saying? Well, they're, they're using it to initialize it. But what I was trying to say there is, it's, there's, you know, we have more than just pretty pictures in, in the satellite. We actually have a new model that the her smoke, which is help, would help us then smoke. I mean, you can see that, but I need to forecast it. So the her smoke is going to help us. This is actual imagery from the satellite. It's like if you're sitting on the um, space, space, space station, right? I know. That's lightning. That's lightning. Lightning. Yeah, lightning. Sorry. Yeah. I think that's all I have. Um, uh, that was those two links. And oh yeah, so <laughs> Go16 actually is a big deal. <laughs> Stay tuned.